Hey there friends, how's it going today? So uh, I want to answer a quick question that came in in this video. It's going to be on the topic of hammer-ons, bends, and pull-offs, right? These are some trickier uh, articulation things. So Alan posted this question over in my Song Notes community forum. You mentioned how these techniques are all tricky on an acoustic guitar. So I'm going to walk you through them. I'll start with what I think is the most approachable, which are hammer-ons. Then later on, I'll get into bends and pull-offs, right? Then I'll zoom in over 15, 20 minutes. I'll walk through as if you were sitting right in front of me. You know, how I would recommend approaching these, some of the difficult things to avoid at first, and some of the sort of things that'll make them easier when you're first getting started. So stick around if this sounds interesting. And um, if the rest of you are kind of in a hurry or you want to get more to a certain topic, check out this list of videos that I have in the description, right? These are previous lessons I've made um, covering some of these topics. For example, in lesson 61, I, I did a hammer-on exercise using, you know, it's using the G and C add nine chords. If you just want to work on hammer-ons, and rhythm. This is a great exercise for you. It uses the Ryan Bingham song, South Side of Heaven, as its inspiration, right? Um, now, bends. If you're interested in your bending uh, technique and you want to work on that, Lesson 457. It's a pretty recent one I did. I look at, like, bluesy bends and look at the technique. I have a backing track. I show you a bunch of riffs with tabs. That's a really good one I recommend, right? And I have a bunch of song lessons, for example, that use hammer-ons and pull-offs. And Millionaire by Chris Stapleton is a really good hammer-on one as well, where that main riff he's playing has that. And then there's things with the pentatonic scale. If you're interested in using that scale as a way to practice your hammer-ons, which I re actually recommend because for the G uh, and C major pentatonics, you just have these really ripe shapes that are... They just lend themselves to practicing this stuff. So I have a PDF of all these pentatonic scales in open position if you want those shapes. It's general. It's really going to be helpful for you to understand, right? So uh, get those lessons on my website, songnotes.net. The links are in the description here. Uh, but Alan, let me zoom on in and uh, answer your question here. Looking at hammer-ons, then I'll talk about pull-offs, then I'll talk about bends and uh, throw in some other stuff along the way as well. So Alan, thanks for your support. Everyone else, if you're interested in finding all my lessons, songnotes.net is where you find them. And uh, please consider being a member if you are not one already, right? You get a access to all my members only stuff my, my my cheat sheets right you get a discount on all my song sheets that are licensed right you get access to my courses and access to this community forum where alan posted this question so let's look at this one and uh, zoom on in and i'll help you out here alan all right let's go all right so we're zoomed in here let's look at hammering on first right later on we'll get to bending and pulling off um the simplest way i would explain getting started with hammer-ons is pick up your guitar get it in tune and everything put your hand in a c major chord shape, right? This is something you already know, right? We're going to use what we know as a sort of position of strength to expand into a new a new concept here. Now, here's the deal. With hammering on, typically, you know, there's something played, and I'm going to sort of hammer on a note, and it's going to make, you know, that, that cool hammer on sound. But before we even get to that, let's start, let's like not even worry about picking the strings. Let's just do this. Okay, I'm, I'm taking my left middle finger, and I'm hammering on the fourth string second fret. Okay? This is where your middle finger would go for a C chord. Okay? I'm doing this because I want to demonstrate to you that hammering on fundamentally is with your fretting hand, fingers coming firmly into the fretboard. Technically, you don't even need to play anything over here. Okay? That's the fourth string, second fret. I could do the same thing on the fifth string, third fret. Okay? It's harder when I get to this first fret note of the of the C chord, right? Technically, there is a, a you can hear the hammer on happening, but I bring this up again because uh, at the end of the day, hammering on is all coming from your fretting hand. Now, here is the deal: how it works most of the time is we are playing a note with our you know our, our pick, right, or we're finger picking. So if I play that second string and I play it open, and I bring my index finger into the note, it's going to cause this new note to ring out. But I never picked that first fret note, right? I just plucked the open uh, second string, and then I uh, put my finger down firmly. And by doing that, it's effectively, you know, taking, um, I guess, the vibrations of the string that are already there, like literally, the string is vibrating. Whoops, I missed. You don't want to miss. And by hammering firmly, um, I'm guessing some of those vibrations sort of carry on but this is happening firmly enough where it's not killing the sound. If you do a hammer on slowly, it's just gonna kill the sound. And then when you hit the fretboard, no matter how hard you hit it, it's not gonna create anything new. So you kinda have to have some speed. You have to have some strength. 
and you need to have some um, calluses on your finger are going to help because if your finger is a really soft, you know, if it's soft skin that's not used to playing the guitar, what's going to happen is it's just going to muffle the sound, right? Let's look at some of the thicker strings. Okay, again, C major chord shape here, fifth string open. You don't want to miss, I was missing there. Now, as far as which part of your finger is doing this, I think you want to, you know, do what's comfortable. Um, you don't need to be like super finger tippy. I'd say just play a C major chord and bring in your ring finger where it would normally go. That's a good um, barometer to me, at least, of uh, which part of your finger you should be using. You can do the fourth string note as well. A cool thing about C is you can. You can strum the chord with the fourth string not fretted and then bring that middle finger down. I think your middle finger is probably, I'm guessing, outside of your thumb is maybe your strongest finger. So this is a really good thing to start with. Okay? Um, you could do it in G too. Alright, third, second, open, 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 third, fifth string, second fret. So I'm playing it where I normally would. You want to be close to the, the to the metal fret, right? It's going to basically make it, in general, that's going to give you a cleaner sound, right? Anywhere pushing down is going to give you the sound, but it's going to require, you're going to have more leverage if you do it closer to this, right? So anyway. Now, one thing to practice when you're doing hammer-ons is um, G major pentatonic. this written up in tab form in a separate lesson but the cool thing is if you just take your middle finger is uh, basically playing you know between uh, second fret on the fifth string second fret on the fourth string second fret on the third string okay it's a nice little series of hammer-ons you can do to practice the G major pentatonic. I'm just plucking once per string here, but I'm hammering on those three strings in a row. Now, um, that's basically how hammering on works. Now, you can hammer on with any finger. Okay, that's me playing a C major chord. Hammering on that first fret note. I find the first fret is a little bit trickier just because you're closer to the nut of the guitar and you have just more, um, I, I don't know, I just feel like the, the action is, I don't know if the action is higher, if that's the right way to say it. But in general, I think the first fret is the hardest to bar. And I find that hammering on the first fret is tough as well. So that's how hammering on is gonna work, right? Um, Using the C and G chord is a great way to do this, right? When you're learning, but when you're learning hammer ons Now let's look at pull-offs because pull-offs are, in a way, very related to hammer-ons. Similar concept. Um, the main idea here is if we play a note, I only pluck that once right here. I'm not going to pluck it again, but listen. Okay? Now, what am I doing there to make that note? In a sense, what I'm doing is just taking my finger off. But it's not as simple as just taking your finger off. Because if you do it like I just did there, it, the sound's going to be dead. If you, if you pull your finger off really slow, what's happening is as you leave the fretboard... Your finger is touching the string, but it's not, um, it's not pushing the fretboard, so the vibrations are just killed. Right? So you need to do it fast, but I would say there's a little bit more to it than just removing your finger quickly. I find that you almost want to, as you take your finger off, almost like I don't know how to explain this, but push into the fretboard and like as if you're flicking off, right? Almost like there's something on your shirt 
and you're you're pushing into your shirt like it's a, like a little I don't know like a little piece of food or something I, I, some kind of dirt or something that you're kind of pushing off or a little bit of uh, dried you know something on the counter you're you're you're, you're kind of you're effectively gonna flick it or you're gonna push into it and then move your finger off of your shirt or the table and same with the string but when you come off you're gonna it's almost like you're flicking the string as you as your fingers jumping off of it I don't know if that makes sense you kind of have to just practice this third fret then a string is what I'm doing here right if you looked at a chord a good thing to practice with C is this um, second string first fret note Now, this kind of gets into bending. I'll talk about bending in a second. But bending is when you're kind of pushing into the string against the fretboard, but you're also pushing like, um, I don't know if laterally is the right word. I'm pushing some downward force onto the string. To me, that makes pulling off just work easier, right? You're, you're effectively, you're pushing into the fretboard, but I'm also pushing down towards the floor a little bit. You can see the string kind of moving a little bit. And what that does is, I mean, my callus is right there anyway, so it kind of, it causes the string to make a noise because of the, the pull-off I just did. Now let's look at some examples here. The common one a lot of folks probably learned first is um, Over the Hills and Far Away by Led Zeppelin. This is a song I've never really been able to play, but it's one of the first ones I ever wanted to play. The it song starts with third string, hammer onto second fret, and then a pull off. So you're playing the third string open, hammering on second fret, and then pulling it off. Now here is where probably I went wrong when I was first starting this and anyone learning this song, you're gonna run into trouble uh, if you try to learn two things at once, right? You're hammering on and you're pulling off. If you can't do either of those, if you can't do the hammer on, like the pull off's not gonna, not gonna work for you. So what I recommend doing, is practicing the hammer on first by itself. Middle finger. Well, I'm using middle. You could use index, I guess. Okay. Now, practice the pull off by itself, meaning play the fretted note. Second fret on the third string. I'm doing a pull off where I'm effectively again kind of getting that little mini bend action in there to add some tension to the string and then it's kind of it's like I'm not even really pulling off I'm just sliding my finger so that it can't hold the string anymore sliding it sliding my finger down towards the ground but you want it to when you finally lose contact with the string you want it to be absolute and complete so that the string makes a new noise. If you if this finger hangs around, I lost the contact, but it it, it uh, the finger was still touching part of the string. That's not good. So you want to start this motion, but then when you can feel your fingers about to lose contact with the string, get it out of there, right? You want it to be a clean pull off. So once you're comfortable with the pull-off, do the hammer on, then the pull-off. And the goal is... In that song, it's open to second to open to fourth, whoops, on the fourth string. Open fourth string. Now, see, hammering, uh, pulling off this fourth fret note with my ring finger, I, I'm not as good at this. This finger is a bit more wild, and you don't want it to make a noise on the third string. Like, if you, if you did that, this finger is being too erratic, and it's, it's hitting the other strings. So, it, again, it's about precision, but practice this by itself. If it's giving you trouble,
be able to do this reliably by itself before you start bringing in. See, man. So uh, forgive me if that's a bit um, not perfectly played, but I'm showing you because I'm not perfect at this either. There are certain things I can do with a lot of confidence. But doing Led Zeppelin, that wasn't bad. But it wasn't in Led Zeppelin's tempo. Jimmy Page is playing it like just effortlessly, right? So again, start with position of strength, of confidence. Take something you know well, like the C major chord, G major chord. Practice just those middle finger hammer-ons. It's a good way to get comfortable with things. And then you can find other chords, like a D major chord, hammer on that second uh, fret note on the thinnest string. You could practice pulling that off too. Okay. Um, now, but if it's a, a song based pull off, even um, this is a pull off from four to second to open and then open fourth string. This is in the song Wish You Were Here and it's also in the song. Um, over the Hills and Far Away by Led Zeppelin, right? Da -da 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 -da. Four to second to open. Now that's multiple pull-offs in a row. That's incredibly hard too. Master them one at a time. Get good at that one, then get good at this one. And then only once you're good at both of those, individually combine them. And do it slow. Whoops. Okay, um, and wish you were here, right? Okay, so um, that's some tips for, for, for pulling off. Pulling off is tricky. Start with something simple. Use your open chord shapes to try pulling off one finger at a time. Right? Those trickier pull-offs that involve being uh, rhythmically precise and rhythmically quick as part of a lick, take it really slow. Worry about it without the overall um, phrase. You know, don't feel like you have to play the entire phrase when you're practicing. Just practice one note at a time. Combine multiple notes slowly. And then you can bring in the whole phrase. And then eventually, whoops. Okay, now let's talk about bends really quick. Bending, the main idea here, let's take the fifth fret of the second string. Okay, I can just play it, keep my fingers still. But if I could add some vibrato, which effectively is kind of like bending, where I'm kind of keeping the finger pushed down to the string, but this is kind of causing the, the pitch of the note to subtly waver, up in pitch and down in pitch, which is, which is cool. I mean, there's lots of ways you can do this. Right? And you see lots of guitar players sort of do this on YouTube too. It is a cool way to add a bit of just, uh, not really dynamic. I mean, it makes your playing dynamic. It makes your playing feel alive. It's not just a machine. It's, right? So, bending. The main idea here is by keeping our finger pushed into the string, but by bending our, by bending the string, you can bend it toward the floor or toward your face. Either way, it's gonna lengthen the string. The distance between my finger and the bridge of the guitar here, when I play this note, that distance is going up, right? And that's causing the pitch of the note to go up, okay? Now, as far as bending, here's some practical tips. Number one, bending 
on these frets is a lot harder because the string that you have the nut of the guitar here it's just this is a point i don't know if it's leverage or it's a fulcrum or whatever the the, the physics part of it is but bending you just you're fighting against that fixed point whereas if you bend something in the middle of the guitar you have all this buffer over here right and then you have all this buffer down here so basically getting comfortable with bends in the middle of the guitar is going to be easier at first now here's the number one trick i would say with bending and i have a separate lesson where i talk about this if you search for blues bends on my website uh, i'll put the link in the description of this it um it helps you out um the realization that i that i learned when i f was first learning bending is you can bend you can use multiple fingers to push the string and you're either pushing it towards your face or you're or you're sort of towards the ground but either way look these three fingers so I'm, imagine this my ring finger is on the fifth fret of the second string and if i want to bend that in this case i'm going to push it towards my face all three of these fingers are pushing the string now this is the finger that's playing the note but these can come in look i can touch this second string it's these fingers touching the second string aren't going to mess the sound up because the vibration is happening between my finger and the 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 bridge of the guitar here right so this means that this finger this finger and the finger that's fretting the note can all push the note up the string up and that's going to just make it an easier task because each finger is splitting the load. It's like three people lifting a mattress or a bookshelf or something like that, right? The more people you have lifting, the more the weight's distributed. Same with this. If I was to bend with one finger, this finger is having to do everything. It's having to maintain contact with the fretboard while also um, bend, push the string up. But if these two fingers come in, even if it's just one, you know, one extra finger, but if you're bringing two extra, it just gets way easier to do, okay? So that's uh, the general tip I have for bending, and I cover that in my other lesson. Now, um, bend closer down here to open position. A little bit trickier. First fret bends, uh, those are gonna be the hardest, right? Second th fret, third fret, they get a little bit easier. One way to, to practice these is just play a chord, right? The whole theme of this is use what you know. Use these common chords as a position of, um, not a position, but, but you're coming from a position of, of confidence and strength. I know these chords, my fingers know them, I can play them, right? Take a G major. Take that second fret note. Played with your, here I'm playing with my middle finger. You could do it with my, my index finger here. Second fret on the fifth string. I like the middle finger approach because my middle finger is stronger, I think, than my, my index finger. Just practice playing a note and giving a little bit of wobble, okay? That's gonna give you a sort of introduction to this idea of how when you bend the string even a little bit, you add that vibrato, it's gonna sort of make the note feel alive, right? Now try bringing in, if you use your middle finger, then you can then bring in your index. Right? And just get comfortable with that feeling, okay? Um, now again, bending up here is tricky. The bend that I find myself doing the most If you're playing anything in a major tonality, right? And this is your root note. Okay, that's one, two, three, four, five, the first five notes of the major scale, right? I bring this up because take any note on the second string, okay? I'm playing the sixth fret, you can play any fret. If this is your root, and then we add, we go up a whole step, okay? We go up two frets from whatever our root is. That second, that major second, that's away from the root, You can bend that note, come back to the major second normal, and then go back to your root. It's going to sound generally very good.
And this is something I cover in my other lesson, talking about blues bands or beginner blues bands. It's what I call it. I mean, even if it's not bluesy, that, that's kind of how I think of it, right? Okay, so pick any root note, go up two notes, bend that note a little bit, bring it back, and then go back to a root note. Okay, so that's uh, how I would approach doing bends, is multiple fingers are gonna be your friends. Um, now, um, Alan, you brought up this question. If you have any specific song examples, please let me know, because that will help out. But um, otherwise, I just want to, uh, to share this. I, this is longer than I expected, but you know, a patient walkthrough, I hope this is helpful, and uh, let me know if you have any other uh, questions. Uh, see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.